So we're doing testing today and I just want to show you a couple things up front. First of all, when you push the button, the piezo buzzer itself goes off on the gravity flyer. I just wanted you to watch this and listen and you can hear it clearly go off. This one right here is really hard to hear. What you're going to listen for is a little bit of a sound. When I turn the dial down to the bottom, it's going to make a click. When I move it back up towards the top, it's going to make a click. Now, that sound in person is loud, but on the microphone, it's barely showing up. Understand, this is what Alexi's listening for when he's moving this dial. Did you catch that? It went When you got to the upper lower, especially when I came in a little closer to it. I'll play it one more time for you guys, see if you can't pick it up. It's important when you test it. When it's real life, you can see it, comes in very clear. However, on the recording device I used, it didn't show up well. So now that we've heard what this ultrasound is doing, we can tune it left and right. Now, just so you know, as we move the Tesla coil power up, it changes the area of the frequency it likes to be in. You'll hear those clicks in a different area. So you have to turn it up a little bit and find the clicks again in order to be in the right place. Now, also when you push the button, it's pushing on the piezo buzzer. So it's actually pushing the buzzer itself. So what is going on with the oscilloscope when we're picking up the frequency? I wanted to show you that as well. So let's take a look. See that? Let me get the measure again. It's amplifying part of the signal. It's showing up in the blue. So the blue right there is our gravity flyer. See how it's moving around every time you hit it? This is why it's so hard to line it up to hit it right. You see that one? That was a good one. Just so we can put a cap on this piezoelectric buzzer and the ultrasound device. So we know when we push the button what it's doing. It's basically changing the octave in the center plate. Now I can tap that center plate and get it to change the octave in it. But I just want you to notice that it's not doing its job here. Look at the waves. They're 180 degrees out of phase. 
I am not in the cracked octave. So, what happens when I tap it? I start to get closer to the correct octave every time. These two frequencies must align. We can see that they want to be in the same area, but we cannot get them to hit the same. You see the amplification go up, but we can't hit the amplification unless it's on both of them. That's our problem here. That's why we're not popping off the ground because I'm 180 degrees out of phase. So let's just ask the question, why isn't it doing what we want it to do? Either the piezoelectric disc is not big enough and can't provide a heavy enough force, or the Tesla coil itself is not at a high enough uh, amount going in, the input isn't high enough, in order to get this thing to hit hard enough when the button's pushed. It could be either one, we're gonna have to explore both things to figure it out. All right, we're getting ready to start testing on our gravity flyer. I wanted to show you something. Here's my gravity flyer right here. We are connected to our Tesla coil, right? We're just going down the throat of it, just like that. We're not hooked to anything. Here's the little wire that comes off of it right here, so you can see it. Now, I want to show you this on the oscilloscope. This is kind of cool. So let's look at the circuit real quick for the ZBS. We're connected in down here. Just so you know on the ZBS circuit, the wire on your right hand side when you're looking at it this way with the power source there is always to the bottom. And the other wire clips on and goes around the coil to whichever one you're going to get to to get your proper resonance. Now we just have a simple right here 40 volt power source. Here's the cool thing. Watch the magic. Now people wonder why the gravity flyer gets in the megahertz. Watch. You see that right there? So we are just barely tipping it. And that's at the very bottom right there. Understand this. You're not going to be running that all the time. This is where our feedback happens. So you can see we're already doing good. We're going to be able to hit the megahertz range. So... Let's clip this up right here. I could feel the heat in there. It did not like that at all. That's a good sign for this. So let's see what we get now. We're getting a better signal, not a great signal. Bring it up one. Now we got something. Okay, so let's take a look real quick. 370, 360. Now, this thing resonates with it attached to it around 340, so we're close. But just check this out. We went from clipping it at the very bottom to just a couple coils up. What does this signify in our gravity flyer? When we do the feedback, it's pushing down to the megahertz range. When it comes out of the feedback loop, it goes back to the regular resonating frequency. So, let's see, we're a little off, but that's okay, we can still check and see. We are getting plenty of light up from our Tesla coil here. Let's see. And there it's lighting right there, next to our gravity flyer. Now it's not perfect yet, but guys, we are well on our way. So, positive news going in for our testing, let's see. We're not warm at all yet. Guys, this is a very, very good sign right here. So, we're going to go ahead. I'm going to show you guys this. And then later on, we're going to do some testing. I'm going to show this. Hopefully, what I can show in the testing later on is I want to be able to drop that thing right into the megahertz range as soon as I flip it. So, that's kind of the goal here, guys. So, just understand we're doing good so far. For testing from here on in, I picked up a second webcam. Now, I had a little trouble in focusing it in, but what I want to start doing is showing my oscilloscope versus what's going on with my gravity flyer. That way we can make a correct distinction of what's going on. So, what's going on? We have one probe sitting right next to the gravity flyer, and we have one probe sitting right next to the Tesla coil. What we're trying to do is align both frequencies. We saw that we were 180 degrees out of phase before. This time we're more in phase. What was the biggest difference? 
I had preset the octave in the grabby flyer. So I went around it and I tapped it before I started and put it in the correct octave in order to start out. I did not do that in my testing for the live show. And what happened was that you saw earlier 180 degrees out of phase and the piezo buzzer wasn't strong enough to push it. Now, the piezo buzzer is still not strong enough to be able to force this thing off the ground. Well, maybe it is. I just don't know yet. I didn't have the testicle high enough. What I can tell you is it's definitely cold energy in the gravity flyer from the Tesla coil. There's no question whatsoever in my mind. When I went over and I put the tube onto the gravity flyer, it lit up. When I took it away, it went away. What happened? The heat went back to the MOSFETs inside of the GVS that's connected to my Tesla coil. I finally blew the circuit. So what's that tell you? I'm bringing heat to that circuit Therefore, I know it's cold energy in the center. So, with that part out of the way, we already know what's going on there. You can go ahead and take a look at the rest of the testing. I'll show this. I'll show the live show testing. All right, everyone, hopefully you can hear me on this and that we're good to go. Give me a thumbs up, let me know. All right, I need to make sure I turn off the volume on my phone. This is going to be a problem. Okay. So, let's set this up. I'm going to go ahead and turn this on and get it going. We'll give that a minute just so the uh, bottom can get up to speed.
Yeah, you guys are welcome, man. I'm trying to do this live. It's kind of hit and miss, but uh, we'll see how it goes. All right, we're up and going. Let's see. Yeah, that bottom disc is pumping it out now. Okay, let's go ahead. I'm going to bring in my other phone. Guys, if there's some weird sounds or something, let me know, okay? All right, here we go. So here's my setup here, just so you guys can see it. Put everything on the janitor's cart. And... Grab your fire and test the coil. Put it for the right circuit. We're not on yet. That right there. That's your other circuit right there. So we'll crank this up right here. All right, time to start the clock. We should be good at about 12.15. Is where we're going to crank it up to the next level. Take this one out. Sorry, right, guys. This is a sound coming from my phone. I don't know why. So.
Is that better? Okay. It, it's not going to let me use two things. It keeps take, turning off in one sound and reverbing it. All right, guys, can you hear me? Okay, hopefully you saw the phone thing. I'm going to have to shut this off because of the reverb. Okay, can you hear me now? Says with echo, okay. Okay, now can you guys hear me? I shut off my phone. Uh, it's causing a reverb. I don't know how to fix it, guys. Uh, it's something to do with the microphones. Using two things. I tried to get away with it. I'm just going to have to turn this around the camera once in a while so you can see the oscilloscope. So, okay, here we go. We are two more minutes and I can bring it up a little more. We got the two minutes. Let's go ahead and look. I just want to show you the oscilloscope again real quick. We're in the megahertz frequency. Just We're just running the disk, guys. If that kind of tells you where the gravity flyer is, maybe, you know, that's what we're looking for. This reminds me of Sean's uh, Tesla coil. When he showed it, it showed this in the background. Yeah, it's a very jumpy signal. It's, it's a moving device. What are you going to do? <laughs> I mean, not, not much I could do about that. You know, it's not a steady testicle where it's just sitting in the probe next to it. You know what I mean? But the strange thing is trying to lock this up with the testicle frequency because the testicle frequency takes it over. So, you know, we're getting ready. Okay, guys, I'm going to set it back up over here. Okay, hopefully everything's good enough. Here we go. We're hitting our second one now. Now, we're not up all the way. We're about, uh, you know, two-thirds right now. And we got another uh, five minutes to go before we can put it all the way up. And then we'll start turning on everything else, guys. So if you guys missed everything else, let me kind of go ahead and show you this. I put everything on a little cart here. We got our ultrasound device right here. Our, this right here is for our motors. This right here is for the high voltage. So that's the one we're turning up right now. Right over there, you see my Tesla coil set up. Okay, it's right down the throat of it. And that right there is just for uh, the ultrasound button right here. Okay. And then you can see down here, I have my high voltage circuit set up. Now I need to put some STLs together for some stuff and print it out so I can have everything in nice little spots. But for now, it's going to work for what we're doing. I like this little cart, by the way. Little janitor's cart. Uh, you probably can't see it all that well, but I'll show it later. 
Really cool idea. That's my gravity flyer sit on it when I'm not using it. I also, you see the top of the gravity flyer is different. I took off the dome. I went ahead and I put on uh, a different thing for the piezo so it's easier to switch out if I want to flip it upside down or this way. And it also allows so we can kind of see what's going on when we zoom in later. So, <laughs> speed up the process. Yeah, you know, some of this is about building fields. So, we're just getting the air electrified around it right now. So, we're just going to kind of let it build around that disc. So, guys, I hope this goes well. You know, I had a little time yesterday to, to kind of look through the uh, Tesla coil to kind of figure some stuff out. I just printed off these STLs for the piezo. So that was this morning. It's just kind of a long ride. I had good luck with this circuit uh, about heating up and stuff. Um, I wish my phone would have worked because I got a little heat thing. It tells you exactly how hot the MOSFETs are getting. I think 116 was as high as I got them. And that was around 40-something volts. So that's not very much in that Tesla coil. But it seems to put out a good signal at that. All right, a few more minutes, and we'll turn it up the rest of the way. So just for so you guys who didn't know that the uh, Tesla coil, when you put it on the very bottom uh, thing, the little clip, let me see it right there, that little clip, it's the white cord right there. Um, it basically, when you put it on the bottom one, we hit the megahertz frequency. I was showing that this morning. Right around 25 megahertz, I think 15, somewhere in there. It kind of went back and forth a little bit. But uh, definitely... Definitely getting there. Okay, we got one more minute, guys, and we can turn this thing all the way up, and then we'll start turning everything on. Okay, here we go. Come on. Just like you guys, man, I get antsy with this stuff. I want it to go, but I have to wait. All right, there we are. There we go, all the way up. Now we are good to go. We're going to start turning things on now, guys. All right, I'm going to bring my Tesla coil up and then switch it on. I just want you to take a look at this, guys. Now look at the signal. As soon as I turned on the Tesla coil, it switched. So we're going to channel two, which is our Tesla coil.
you can see we're getting right in there. Yeah, I'm going to leave it right there for right now. And I'm going to turn up this Tesla coil a bit. Wow, keeps changing everything. As soon as you turn this thing a little bit, man. Just for us to leave it right there, guys. Now our Tesla coil is on. We're going to now turn on our piezoelectric disc. We're at 92 degrees on our MOSFETs on our ZVS driver, and we're at 87 on the little clip on the number one coil. Guys, we are so in tune right now. We're not hot at all, and I'm using a small wire. So here we go. Let's take a listen, guys. See if you can't hear this. Listen for the little beep. Hear that? Right there. You guys hearing that at all? Okay, hang on, hang on. That right there. I'm going to move the camera. Sorry for the picture, guys. You want to know what Alexi's listening for? Here it is. Try to move this. Ah, oh, there we go. I just set off the mic. There now. Just a little one on that side. Right there's a little one. Alright, I need to set this back up, guys, because this is a mess. Anyway, that little clicking sound, if you did hear it, that's actually the uh, piezo, uh, the little uh, ultrasound thing. It makes a click on that little coil. If you've ever wondered what Alaska's listening for while he's doing that, it's that little click. So it'll go click, click is when you get to each side of it. So, I should probably record that with my camera and show it to you guys on the video in just a few minutes. That way everybody can enjoy it.
All right, guys, I just put it up to my drive. It'll be ready in a few minutes. Uh, when we get finished with the testing, I'll show it. So now we have our pistol coil up a bit. I'm going to check it one more time. I just need to see the heat on it. Moff sets right now at 120 degrees. The clip itself is at 89 degrees. Guys, we are we're hitting resonance there. We're good. Now, let's set this thing up. We got everything on. We're good to go. We're just gonna adjust it real quick. As soon as I turned up my Tesla call, guys, it changed my frequency. So just give me a minute. There it is, right there. Okay. We're ready to test, guys. All right, here we go. We're going to do it five times. One, two, three, four, five. Nothing. That sucked. Can you hear that sound, guys? Let me see if I can. Okay, now listen, that sound, that's me hitting the button. Hear it? Let me line this up. Now, see what the oscilloscope is doing while we're doing that. You see that? Let me get in there again. It's amplifying part of the signal. It's showing up in the blue. So the blue right there is our gravity flyer. See how it's moving around every time you hit it? This is why it's so hard to line it up to hit it right. Let 
You see that one? That one was a good one. Anyway, guys, sorry for the disappointment, man. It's, uh, you know, it just is what it is. So I was kind of having high hopes with this Tesla coil running like that. We can always check it to see how much power we're getting into it. I could probably push it a little more. Let's see. I'll turn this back. If you like what you saw here today, please like, share, subscribe, and comment. Do all those fun things. And have yourself a great day. Thank you.